Anyway, uh, you just went inside. First of all, who are you? Bob Brent, and I'm a public transit and cycling advocate in Toronto here. Um, is that what brought you here to the appellate court today? Yes, I'm obviously very concerned about local democracy, the mayor's you know impact on council, and uh, it's been a very disruptive, confrontational, unproductive two years with a mayor who really doesn't know how to lead council, guide council that has one view of the world, black and white, and doesn't understand shades of gray, let alone color. So I wanted to just listen, also I wanted to listen to the lawyers, two of the best lawyers in, in Canada, how they presented their case. And just, it's a fascinating process to go through this real democracy and real courts in action. Um, and what did you hear from them, these well, arguments? What? Well, I heard, you know, that the Mr. Lancer did a very good job of, of presenting very concisely and clearly, which the court apparently appreciates when they don't ramble on. And, and the... Because the motion was unopposed, there really wasn't the same chance to listen to Mr. Ruby uh, argue legal points, which we'll have on the 7th of January in the appeal. But I found that uh, the court really was sympathetic to the arguments that were made. There's a three-part test of significant issues on appeal, of irreparable harm, and public interest. And uh, the judge was satisfied that they were met and agreed to... Uh, this day until such time as the decision of the appeal court uh, is heard, and which will be uh, also fairly uh, uh, soon because it's going to happen another month. So that, that also probably played uh, a role in the uh, decision to stay, to keep the mayor in place for supposed stability. And yet I can't think of a mayor who's created more instability in council than, than this current mayor. So the sooner the issue is resolved, the better for Toronto to get back to building a city rather than worrying about dysfunctional, uh, confrontational behavior. Um, so as a private citizen on this day, you came to witness, and were you satisfied with the time that you invested on, on this morning? Yeah, I mean, I was... I, I, I didn't think a, a, a stay was a slam dunk, but I thought it was likely, but I wanted to hear the arguments, and I was a little disappointed that Mr. Ruby decided not to oppose it, because I would like to have heard the opposite of, of Mr. Lenzer's arguments. You know, the the, the intellectual Socratic debate back and forth. Uh, so no, I wasn't disappointed, and I, I think the real the real resolution will come January seventh when we know what the future is. On that one, I think, I, like many people, I'm predicting that the mayor appeal will fail, uh, and I think we will we will then get on with the excitement and chaos of trying to choose or by you know by appointment or by election a mayor who will represent the will of all the people and knows how to work with all the councillors and get us back to building the city rather than obsessing about their personal behavior. And the question of the by-election is still a question. He may actually be re-elected. Re That's not out of the realm of possibility. Absolutely. And I think the fact that the mayor wants a by-election suggests that he knows he doesn't have the 23 votes on council he needs to be reappointed. So his best chance is to, you know, Go back to the electorate, be partisan. You know, Nick Covallis already is talking, you know, posting links on Twitter for the... Nick Covallis is? ...is his former campaign manager, former chief of staff, and is a hyper-partisan. He was just recently sanctioned by the Market Research Association of Canada about uh, soliciting... Uh, a separate matter. A separate yeah. matter. So, you know, you, when you have, you know, the Tea Party-type Republican hard partisan tactics. That's what we'd see in an election, just like we saw the simplicity of respect for the taxpayer, stop the gravy train. The Fords will spin this beyond belief, and what we really need is not more spin. We need more diplomacy. We need more leadership. We need more ethical behavior. As the, the, the ethical leader of Toronto, as Justice Hackman mentioned in his decision, so I would, I'm not one of those that thinks, you know, appointment is anti-democratic when 52.9% of the public in, that voted in 2010 voted unfordination. Uh, and to think that with an election, uh, 60 days plus 45 days, we could be in June before there's a, a mayor uh, elected. And, and literally six months later, we're, we're in another election campaign. So I don't think...